Welcome back and boy do I have a fun one for you. Today we are going to be talking about the mirror modifier that lets you mirror objects on all different axes and you can even compound mirrors to make even more complex designs or compound them even more to make even crazier designs even like this. So if you rotate on the X or the Y or the Z you can do insane 3D printable designs in seconds. So let's go ahead and make mirror monkeys. First off, we'll do File, New, and General. And I am using Blender 2.91. And let's go ahead and save as, and I'll just call this Mirror. And let's flip on over into Eevee, make it nice and sexy. And today we are going to be using Suzanne. So let's go ahead and make her 3D printable real quick. Uh, so just click on the eye, hit L and L and X to delete vertices. And now we can hit A to select all and hit F to fill it in. And let's go ahead and, you know, check all. We've got some non-flat faces around the eyes here. So we'll do cleanup, distorted, bloop, and there we go. So now she is 3D printable, ready to go. We can check all. There we go. Everything except for our overhangs which is totally fine. So let's mirror some monkeys. So go into object mode, make sure you've got your 3D printable Suzanne, and we're gonna go to our wrench modifier and add the mirror. And there we go. So right off the bat, nothing happens. And I mean, it is, but it doesn't look like it because um, it is mirroring, because the modifier is mirroring from the little orange origin point here on the X axis. So it's just duplicating the monkey here on top of itself um, and merging it back together. So to see something, let's hit tab, select everything with A, and then hit G and X. And looky there. So the mirror modifier is working. <laughs> and so now we can move this monkey around and, you know, it will start to mirror. I would throw it to the right. Um, so that way your editable mesh is on the right side and just get the ears to barely overlap. So hit G and X, something like that. And the cool thing about the mirror modifier is that, you know, say if you wanted to grab this and move it on one side, the mirrored object is going to do the exact same thing on the left side. And so a lot of times modelers will use this when they're doing like sculpting or uh, building something that they know is just needs to be symmetrical and they don't want to model both sides. Uh, this is a very powerful modifier that can help you do that. So this is the monkey being mirrored on the X axis. But if we check the Y, now we've got some mirroring going on the Y axis and we can select all with A, hit G and Y and move our monkeys back a little bit and maybe just get the, the tops of their heads to just barely intersect like that. There we go. And then another thing we can do is mirror on the Z axis, you know, and all these can be independent from each other as well. Uh, but let's just go ahead and highlight them all, hit G and Z. And now we are mirroring on the Z axis and just get the chins to overlap right there. And now we've got some weird mirrored cube monkey uh, design going on here. But the issue is uh, these are not actually 3D printable. And what I mean by that is if we hit this little triangle here, it will turn on the wireframes for all the other designs. And we can go into see-through mode with Alt-Z. And notice if we kind of zoom in here, the geometry from all these overlapping parts are like, you know, intersecting. There's like you know, that's, and that's not good for 3D printing. We need these two objects to essentially like bond together. But right now we have some internal geometry overlapping itself, which is going to confuse and mess with our slicers. So let's fix that. And Blender has helped us out by adding these two other options, bisect and flip. And these can work together. So let's go ahead and start clicking these buttons. And I want you to do the same to, to really start seeing the power of the bisect and flip. So Go ahead and click on bisect X, and that's gonna do our ears, you know, our very first one here. So I'm gonna hit one to go into front mode. And notice if we turn off bisect, you know, just kind of keep toggling bisect X on and off. Notice we've got our internal geometry, and when we hit bisect, it's going to join or merge that uh, geometry together. 
Now let's take a look at the back of our Suzanne head. I'm just going to hit 7 on our on my numpad to go to top view and see how there's some internal geometry on the Y axis. We can hit Y, but uh-oh, notice what happened here. Everything disappeared. So that is when the flip function comes in handy. So go ahead and hit Y and looky there. It just flipped it. So, you know, if you ever have um, your bisect do the opposite of what you're trying to do, you can just flip it. So there you go, flip that. And then let's go ahead and do the Z, and you guessed it, that's going to do the chin. So let's go to three, and notice right there on the chin, you know, if we toggle that on and off, it is merging the chins together for us. So this is very, very, very powerful for 3D print design. Um, notice if we hit Z to flip, it's going to just do the opposite. So we're good there. So now we've got some very powerful mirror uh, bisecting and flipping going on. Um, so another cool thing, let's just turn off this, uh, you know, wireframe edits and edit mode. So say if we grab or modify this single, you know, our source monkey in any way, it's going to do the exact same thing for all the other designs, which is incredible and very generative and non-destructive. The next cool thing that you can do with the mirror modifier is the mirror object. So let's go ahead and add another mirror modifier. So just twiddle this one up and let's do add mirror bloop, like that. So we have two mirror modifiers now. And let's switch back to object mode. And what I want you to create is a new object that we are going to mirror from. So this could be any object in your scene. It could be an empty object. And most people use like an empty plane axis. But I want to show you visually what is happening here. So go to mesh and plane and maybe increase the size something like 50 maybe even 100 just you know why not so this is going to act as our mirror just a visual representation of what blender is doing with the mirror modifier and then let's rotate on the y 90 degrees there we go and if we take a look in our item tab up here um, our rotation on our object our plane object here is rotated 90 degrees on the Y. So just do control A and reset the rotation so that it's all zeroed out, but we still have it, you know, looking like a mirror. And this is just to show you, uh, you know, what the mirror modifier is doing. So now if we take our Suzanne, go to our second mirror modifier and make the plane that we just added our mirror, we can even, you know, just rename that plane, call it mirror. And with Suzanne selected, take our mirror object, and we can take the eyedropper and select object mirror. And right away, nothing happens. But if we grab that mirror and hit G and X, notice we've got a mirror. So that is a cool way to kind of see what Blender is doing. And if we rotate on the Z, notice it is mirroring just like it would in real life. We could also rotate on the Y. And that will rotate, you know, up and down. So very, very powerful. But if say if we moved the mirror like G and Y, it's not going to change anything because it's still mirroring on that same axis line. Same thing with G and Z. You know, it's just going to, you know, nothing's really changing. But if we do movement on the of the actual mirror on G and X, that you know is just like a normal mirror. If you were getting close to the mirror, you know, the object would be getting closer to the mirror as well. So that is a cool way uh, that I like to show the mirror modifier. Let's uh, rotate it on the Y, 45 degrees. And so now we've got, you know, a little cube going on here. We could, you know, it's kind of kind of crazy going on right there, but we can hit G and X. Just kind of move that out until maybe the ears touch or maybe the head. I'm going to do maybe the corners to where the, the ears kind of line up. Let me kind of show you the front here. Something like that. G and X, something, you know, in that ballpark, just where the head and the ears kind of intersect. And there we go. So now we've got the mirror modifier working in compound, you know, together. But, you know, let's take it even further. So let's turn on our wireframes here and go into edit mode and go into our front view and take a look in here. So it looks like we've got some intersecting geometry. So for the X axis, let's bisect that. And notice it did the opposite. So we'll just flip it. There we go. Now it is merged together right there. And 3D printable.
And we could even do the same thing on the Z axis. So now we've got, you know, some monkeys popping out there and we could even bisect them and notice it's opposite. So we could flip it. And there we go. We've got some, uh, you know, some crazy monkeys going on there. And the cool thing is if we took our mirror, so grab your mirror object in object mode and rotate that and looky there, it's pretty amazing what you can do with just a few mirror modifiers and let's say rotate on the Z, you know, that's going to give us a different effect. So really you can get pretty creative and make some very complex generative designs very fast in Blender and they're all 3D printable. Like as I'm moving these, it is merging these objects together, almost like a Boolean, uh, but making it 3D printable. That is just insane. And so I'm, I know, you know, no one's ever going to want to make a grid of monkeys like this, but this is just to show an example of, you know, how you can take a simple object and make compound complex shapes uh, with the mirror modifier. And we could even add another mirror modifier just for fun because, you know, why not? We're here. Looky there. We've got another mirror modifier and we can bisect those and, you know, it just keeps compounding. We could go on for days. You could even add other modifiers to this, like the array, and make arrays of this shape that are all, you know, generative and, you know, can do insane, wicked little movements. So that is how you can use the mirror modifier. But there's one more thing I want to show you. Say if we went to our first mirror, and um, down here we have clipping. So sometimes, let's say, if we go into edit mode, turn these off so we're just working with our, our main monkey here select all and so if clipping is off when we hit G and Z notice you know the objects will separate from each other or if we hit G and X you know those will separate but if you have clipping turned on it's going to merge the objects together so with clipping on hit G and X and notice, oh, looky there. So now we're getting a way different look where we're stretching the ears together. They're kind of clipped together. Or you could do G and Z. And again, the same thing happens. So we could stretch it there. We could do G and Y, stretch it there. We could do G and Z. You know, just getting pretty, pretty funky, pretty fast. So we're, we're stretching these pretty extreme, but I just wanted to show you the difference between clipping and non-clipping. And notice I turned off clipping, but they're still clipped together. And that's because you can kind of use clipping as you need it. So say if we undid all this nonsense that we just created, um, you know, if you wanted to hit G and Y and move these apart and then turn on clipping and do G and Z, or sorry, if you wanted to do G and Y, or if you wanted to do G and X, Notice those are staying clipped, but the um, Z wasn't. So, you know, get really creative with that. Uh, same thing goes, even though we've made all those changes, we can still grab our mirror modifier and still make crazy changes or, you know, move the modifier as we need to. And, you know, just have fun. Go to town and play with the mirror modifier. It is insane. So I'm just going to undo that and kind of get our monkey back to this grid formation here. And another cool thing, uh, say, you know, if we zoom out a little bit, notice our monkey is way bigger than our 3D print volume here. So a cool way to quickly adjust everything together. You know, we could hit S and scale, but that's not really scaling everything together. So we could do Shift A and add an empty and do a plain axis. And notice there's a an empty right there in the center and we could just shift click the two objects and hover them over the empty while holding shift. And now if we uh, scale this empty, we could even call it the scale controller, you know, anything you want to want to name it. And then if we scale the controller, notice everything moves together like a family. We can make this fit inside our 3D print volume. So that's just one way, you know, you could even rotate it X on the 90 if you wanted and everything's going to stay together. And so now let's go ahead and export this. So if we go in, grab our Suzanne, go to 3D print, check all, everything's zeroed out. We can tell Blender where we want to save it and then just hit export. We can bring in our mirror monkeys and there we go. We've got 3D printable monkeys that we can slice up. And I'm not going to print this because I don't need an 
a mirrored monkey array uh, but I just wanted to show you that everything in here is 3d printable they're all merged together and that is exactly what you want when you are 3d print designing obviously we would need some support material if we were going to 3d print this um, another cool thing I want to show you is inside blender we can turn on the auto mirror and that will do a lot of steps for you so let's just hide this for now and create a new composition and we'll call this auto mirror you thought you were done but we're still going we're still learning there's so much to know and inside the auto mirror let's do shift a and add another monkey right here and let's crank it up to maybe 50 and so now we've got our monkey hit period to zoom in so a lot of times when designers are designing something that they want to be symmetrical on both sides they'll go into edit mode and they'll go into see-through mode and they'll select half of the face and then they'll delete the faces and kind of make a duplicate um, with the mirror modifier like this Bloop. but the cool thing is say if you just you know had a, a normal object you can do the same thing with the click of a button with the auto mirror and you just need to make sure you have it turned on in your preferences go to add-ons and then just type mirror and just check and make sure you have mesh auto mirror turned on and saved and then you should see it in this edit tab and you can auto mirror on the x axis y or the z and we're not going to go too deep into this but what's cool is if you just hit auto mirror boop, it does it all for you and it cut the object in half down the y just like we did before manually but it's going to do that for you so that's a really fun way to design and use the auto mirror if you you know feel comfortable with that and so now if we move and change things or you know extrude things um, on this monkey it's going to do the exact same thing on the other side so that's the auto mirror add-on i just wanted to show you real quick that works with the mirror modifier and we also have this little data tab here this is more for um, you know doing textures and uh, rendering we're not going to go into that on this lesson uh, but we will be covering these more in the future when we get into adding colors and designs and textures onto our 3d print designs and so that is all for today i hope you had a blast playing with the mirror modifier it is ridiculously powerful and one of my favorite modifiers so you know keep that in your tool belt and let's go ahead and jump into the next lesson